Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is the Ultimate Unity tutorial for beginners and welcome to episode 20. So this tutorial we're going to take a look at something called NavMesh and we'll also take a quick look at tags as well at the end. Don't forget, click the subscribe button, click the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial in this series and indeed everything else on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So what is NavMesh? In its simplest terms, NavMesh is a way of controlling, to a degree, some AI in which the, in this case, skeleton enemy can move around. So, if we go to our skeleton enemy, and uh, we go into his uh, animator, right here, and we basically have idle and attack. So for all intents and purposes, we need to add in another animation, in this case, walking, because we're going to allow, in this tutorial, our enemy to walk around freely as it were or in the sense that we're going to do come and try and attack us so if you remember we have these animations right here and the one we want is this end one which is walk so as we've done previously let's take that animation hold control press d to extract it out of there uh, let's tick loop time so it constantly loops and let's drag and drop it onto the skeleton enemy Let's go back to our animator and we'll set that as the default layer. So that means that whatever happens now, he's going to be performing that walk animation. There we go. It's like a stalking animation, isn't it really? So, nav mesh. How do we use it? It's actually a lot simpler than what you would think. Uh, I know a lot of people are a bit wary of things like nav mesh because it sounds like it should be really difficult, but honestly, it really isn't. So to do that, what we'll need to do is click on Window. And I know we've been here before, and I know we've seen different things, but if I quickly go through just a couple of different things, you've got you know things like general, for rendering, animation, audio, sequencing, analysis, asset management, 2D, AI, X, you know, there's loads of different things here. And at some point we probably will go through most of these. Uh, I think I did briefly touch on it, especially when we went to rendering the, the lighting, but the one we want this time is AI and navigation. So this is what is known as the nav mesh. And what we can do is we select the object that we want to be, uh, how we say, walkable, you know, in quotes here. We could always use a cube if we wanted to, but let's use the terrain just for now to see what results we get for this. So we need to click over here, make sure navigation static is ticked. And does, it doesn't really matter too much about the off mesh links. We can deal with things like that at a later date. We just want to get this walkable for our enemy. Uh, navigation area walkable, which, yeah, that's fine. And then if we click on bake, you'll see a couple of different options. Not too important at this point, but we just need to click on bake. And it will just give it a moment to kind of think about what it's doing. But all this is doing is creating an area where the skeleton is able to walk. So it's generating its own place it can walk. If you give it a moment, you'll see all of this blue area is where it is able to walk. So, for example, uh, if we take the trees right here, so it effectively learns where it can and can't walk. You can see here everything. The only um, other things you'll have is, for example, it could walk through this building at the moment. We'll get to that at some point when we um, work out later on, go more in depth with AI. Uh, if we look at these mountains here, you can see that he's not going to be able to walk up these steep slopes, which is what you would expect to happen anyway. So it's quite intelligent in the way it learns and knows where the skeleton can and can't walk when we bake it. So that's one part of this all done. The next part is we have to create a script which allows us to control, or rather allows the skeleton to control itself, where it's going to walk to and from. So let's go to our scripts folder down here. Uh, enemies, right click, create, C sharp script, and let's call this navigation AI. And let's open that up in Visual Studio. 
So we are getting into AI a little bit. Um, we have in the past couple of tutorials in this one, and we probably will in the next one. Uh, but once we've got some basic AI in place here, we'll probably move on, do some more stuff, learn some more stuff, and then come back and make some even cooler AI. It's just how it works. So we have our script open. The first thing we're going to want to do is add in the namespace at the top because we're dealing with artificial intelligence. The script has to recognize that it needs to pull this. So using unity engine dot a i semicolon and inside the script itself we're going to use both start and update but we don't need the annotations so let's get rid of those. Now we're going to declare two variables and the whole idea is that we'll start off by saying our uh, enemy is going to constantly come towards us so we need one of the variables to be the player as it were or you can have it set as the destination but to kind of future proof a couple of things we'll just name this variable the destination even though we're going to set it as the player so public game object the destination semicolon and next what we have to do is declare the actual uh, nav mesh agent itself and what I mean by that is when we start up the um, actual game itself and the script runs it just kind of recognizes that the you know the whole nav mesh agent thing the nav mesh everything so in this case what we do here is I'm not gonna do this public nav mesh agent and we'll just call it the agent semicolon and in void start, we're going to first declare the agent and we'll get the component, which is going to be nav mesh agent, which we will add to the game object in just a moment. But for now, we just have get component spiky brackets nav mesh agent and it will appear there because we've declared we're using that kind of thing up here in the namespace so if you haven't got this using unity engine.ai at the top this won't work so that's why we need to have that namespace and open oh, close bracket semicolon so what's next well it's pretty easy all we do is set the agent as its destination as to where it's going so the agent dot set destination and in brackets we'll have the destination dot transform dot position so what we're doing here is saying the destination where whatever object this is attached to in this case the skeleton is going to move towards it's going to go towards whatever we set as destination in this case the player so that's what I mean when I say it's going to come towards us. So let's save that script and head back into Unity. Just compiling there. So let's go to our skeleton enemy. Now we need to add that nav mesh agent. So click, make sure we are clicked on there and then make sure you click on inspector panel right there. So we still have navigation set. You'll notice when we click back on the inspector panel that all the blue disappears. But if we go back onto navigation, it reappears. Um, there are multiple settings that we can play with, but I'm not going to go into these at this point. When we get into more in-depth AI, that is when we can. But please feel free to uh, play around with it if you want to. Uh, I just want to get the basics and the mechanics working right now. So let's add component and let's search for nav. Oh, there we are. Right, just type nav and there we go. Nav mesh agent. Now we'll leave it as it is for now. But these are settings that we can play around with. As I said, let's just get the basics working for now. Uh, let's attach the skeleton AI script onto the skeleton itself. And then the skeleton variable is going to be the FPS controller. So obviously I don't mean the skeleton AI. Uh, sorry, the video cut off there, guys. Um, it's actually a navigation, not skeleton, which is a pretty silly thing to do. So yeah, navigation AI straight onto our skeleton right there so the destination is going to be the fps controller over there perfect so we're going to test this now let's press play and our skeleton should come towards us 
and he does. Um, okay, so his animation has... I swear I set that as uh, default. There we go. Okay, so walk is default now. Uh, I did quickly notice then our speed was a little bit fast, so what we'll do is change it to 2, and let's try that again. So you can see what's going on here. We've changed the speed, almost half it. Okay, same again. Um, I'm not sure what's gone wrong with Unity there. Uh, just make sure that that walk is ticked loop. I'm positive I ticked loop about uh, 10 minutes ago, but okay, never mind. Uh, so, final time, and there we go. There's our skeleton coming towards us. Let's quickly run this way. Man, he's still coming. Perfect. So you can see how the nav mesh works. If we run away from him, all the way over here, he should eventually follow us all the way here. And he shouldn't come through the trees, as it were. He should navigate around the trees. So I'm just going to give this just a moment for him to kind of realize what he's doing. But there we go. He's following us. He's hunting us down. Perfect. So the speed of two looks to be fairly decent. He doesn't appear to be sliding too much. Maybe a bit of a quicker speed. Yeah. So I'm going to increase the speed just a little bit. Maybe 2.4. And I'm going to save the scene once again there. So remember, just keep in mind that you attach the right script there rather than me being a bit daft and attaching the wrong script. But either way, that's how we've got our nav mesh working. It's all working. It's great. It's fantastic. We can refine this at a later date. Um, so I did say we're going to touch on tags as well. Uh, there is a couple of things I want to tag before we go any further because they'll be useful when we eventually get more and more in depth with AI. So over here, you'll notice I'm um, uh, on the skeleton enemy here. At the top, we have tag, and it's currently untagged. We also have layer set as default. Layers are something we'll deal with as well, I think, at some point more and more. Uh, tag for now. Let's go and click that drop-down menu. And let's click down here on add tag. And let's click on plus. And let's call this enemy. Now, if we go back onto there, Let's click tag again and let's click enemy. So what we're doing here is we're labeling certain objects as a definitive tag. So it's also wise if we go to our controller right there and set the tag to player. Now, the reason we can use tags is because it gives us an opportunity in our script to identify, for example, if we're crossing through a barrier, if that barrier is indeed the player or if it's an enemy. And like I say, it will come in quite handy at a later date. So next tutorial, uh, we're going to do some more AI, focus more on our skeleton and focus more on like attacking and how we can attack the skeleton and do all kinds of cool things. So guys, until that next tutorial, thank you very much for watching.